something down here so we're gonna see if we can get that Welcome to the History Hunter, welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. Today I'm alone, I'm on a little two days road trip, revisiting a beautiful spot where the Germans had some secret stuff, actually ammo storage, and uh, we're gonna fill you in a little bit of that when we come along up here in the hillside, so join me and let's see if we can find the pass together. Backpack, uh, really heavy about nine and a half kilos today and uh, got supplies this is like a two-day road trip and i'm gonna be out all day unless there will be an insane rain coming um, let's see if i can grab the whiteboard and fill you a little bit in in uh, what we're going to try to do here today let's take a little closer look of uh, what we're doing here today you can see here there's this gravel road cutting in through the terrain a little bit uphill there you have different kind of uh, munition uh, starches some of them are actually just wooden construction some of them are actually uh, concrete bunkers and all over the place today there's like wood and forest as you can see in my video and um, you cannot see any of this no, uh, anymore but what you can see are kind of like areas which are different than the rest of the forest the gravel road is still there and today i'm just doing a little bit on kind of this side here all of these had some fencing going around i'm guessing that this one had a fence perimeter going like this because I've seen defense poles all over and I'm kind of like just in the area around here and this is where the findings of today will be and there are lots of them I just started to figure out how this was and uh, what happened there and today is going to be exciting to see if we can find something here this is the basic tool set that I'm going to use today like the history hunters favorite tools are right here you could say um, got a couple of digging tools spades small one big one i'm going to test out some new gloves today black and gray really love that we got the nocta pin pointer very very good pin pointer you can adjust the sensitivity there the um, there's a light and you can actually change this front hood here if you, so you don't kind of uh, uh, wear out the uh, the thing underneath there and we have the multi cruiser um, macro multi cruiser beautiful machine even for beginners or very professional people it's got so many programs so many features and I'm gonna use the small sniper coil to go in between all the rocks and roots and stuff but I'm really really pleased with that machine it's like waterproof got tons of programs and being waterproof is very very important when it's wet and uh, rainy like it's been the last days and it won't shatter or you know talk to itself just be totally dead silent and uh, you can use it on high gain if you want to I love the uh, mobility you can even take apart this one take it off the stanchion and it just goes down to this very very small compact lightweight unit so really really nice i'm gonna have this rain cover on the machine is as i said completely waterproof but the rain cover just you know prevents me from getting scratches and stuff on 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 the display there itself so that's about it let's see if we can do something here right now and see if we can find the past Booting up, what I love with this multi cruiser from Macro, it's got a hum tremendously high recovery speed. Goes like did it did it. So if you have like one item there, one item there, one item there, we go like did it did it did it did it. It will pick it up very quickly. I'm just going to use a very basic program here today, and I'm not going to notch out anything, ranging all the way from iron to aluminum, and uh, let's see what that will give us. 
you know, we're not gonna find huge stacks of uh, 88 millimeter shells or bombs or, you know, hand grenade boxes. Most definitely gonna find just very, very minute details from what could have been here. And um, that's what makes it so exciting. You actually, n is that something? What is that? Holy moly, we actually found a detonator right away. I can't believe my eyes. Holy Madonna. We actually found a detonator right away. That is amazing. I never expected that. That's a chirpy signal. That's definitely. I'll clean that and see if I can show it to you and uh, we'll figure out what that is. Cool. So, there is the item. And it's actually a mine fuse. Uh, it is uh, the one in the middle there. And it's set you set set 35, a typical set set 35 fuse. And it will probably be attached, you know, on the top of a mine like this. Um, see here, the different kinds of features on the top there with the pin being pulled out. This one knocks down hits the percussion cap, cap there and a boom and it explodes uh, let me see if I can get you down there there's actually a, a number and a code on it so I'm gonna see if I can get you down there all right can you see that R384 R with two opposite R's and uh, it's actually this type and on the right end on the right hand side you can see 39 so this is the R384 made in 1939 by the Germans very cool little detail you have to really look for it and uh, but it's there always there so that kind of gives it away and uh, i just love these small details well i said it before i'm finding so much more stuff with this macro multi cruiser that i've done with any other detector so really really happy with that that is actually pretty interesting because this is a piece of coal if you find coal pieces, you know for sure that the Germans especially used that to heat their bunkers and uh, munition storages and barracks. So it's not here in the wilderness for nothing. Someone placed it here and there could easily be a lot more around here. Interesting. So a piece of coal from the German activity. Some thick cable here. Could be for the fencing they had around. They fenced them in and put barbed wire on the outside. So who knows? Got a surface find here. That is a massive piece of something. What is that? That's huge. I couldn't tell you, but uh, outside, a former German World War II ammo storage. That machine, Macro Cruiser Multi, just keeps on showing me the past. Look at that. This, uh, I guess it is an ammo box hinge. Broken iron. Definitely from the storage here. That is cool, huh? That's worth a small little holy Madonna. Well, <clears throat> this definitely looks like a mortar. Um, I don't think I'll dig too much more of that. I think it is a mortar. Oh, uh, why me? Well, it's ammo storage, so who knows. But I really don't want to dig that thing there. This is why I like the sniper coil. You can go in anywhere. That is just mineralization. Makes the detector think there is a surface find there, but there's not. A lot of these rocks are hot rocks, as we call it. So they will give off a very strong signal as if there were metal down there, but there isn't. And that's the challenge of 50 something. That's a hard 50. We'll go for that one. Aluminium thing. Can't see any markings or anything, but I'll definitely give it a go and see if there are some writings there. 
Who knows what that could be? Got something here. Oh, I have to turn it on. <laughs> that will help a lot. Turning it on, something is here. The detector told me. Something is here. What is that? Oh, cool. Look at that. That is oh, in very good condition. Are you kidding me? That is brass. And that is, is that also brass? Wow. Are you kidding me? It's very, very close to the roadside here, which then was gravel. Look at that. That's a K98 munition clip from the K98 rifle. There would be like um, five cartridges or rounds standing here. So how cool is that? That's a brass and it's in very good condition. So many sounds and spooky animals in this forest. I can hear birds and stuff. Very nice. You know, while I'm rumbling around in the forest here looking for the past, I like to make a huge shout out to all of my beautiful Patreon and PayPal supporters. You are the ones who make this come true. Without your very, very kind support, we couldn't have done this. And I also like to take the opportunity to tell you that I do create some beautiful World War II dioramas that I give away on the end of each month to so all of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. So if you like, you can check out those videos. And if you subscribe, comment, give the thumbs up, watch more of our videos, check out the ads, all of that helps out to support our work. And in that way, I can actually present even more cool material for all of you to enjoy. So check out these possibilities and uh, we're very grateful for that. I can actually see the feature of a running trench coming up here very typical of the germans to have a trench chisel out in the rock so they can run up and down at the facility i do believe this path here is just that of course can't be without it your german combat barbed wire still there and they probably use that to protect the facility and there will probably be more something is in here I'm very surprised is that something oh look at that oh that is a cartridge I think oh wow is that a nine millimeter Wow, we can actually almost read the back there. I'll figure out, see if I can see some dates. But that's a live round. See that? It's actually one of the fence poles. That means that that is on the outside of the perimeter of the ammo storage bunker. And this is on the inside. And we're finding all of the pieces on the inside, nothing on the outside. Very strange. Really happy the weather is with us here. Look at that. That is a complete fuse. Gonna be very, very gentle with that. See that? There are the threads. So again, from the German munition location, these come up. And what are they? Well, we found some of them and they are actually something that is called a Sunto or Brennsunto. You can see a German potato masher hand grenade and inside here is one of the earlier type of uh, Brennsunto 24. And uh, it was kind of, you pull that little thing, you unscrew the cap, pull out that ceramic bolt, pull that, the Sunto starts, ignites the uh, charge and boom as the war uh, went on uh, metals were more and more scarce so they had to use them instead of lead they used them in aluminium they had some rubber seals and then they were called the uh, Sunto 39 so this is exactly what we found and 
it's so cool to see that these little details it's still there it's in the ground we don't know why the germans discarded them there we know for sure that they were outside the munition bunkers and we know for sure that they came from the germans in the second world war but we really don't know and we'll probably never know why were they discarded into the uh, area outside of the bunker there so but again very nice little cool detail hope you enjoy that i definitely did so did we just find something from the guards got a cartridge there looks definitely like the k98 and i'm thinking do we have a small spill here yeah there's another one two yeah good confirmation what does it say p315 1939 one with red on the back one with the green that is definitely smack in the right time frame of the beginning of the war so let's have a look at how they use these these are the k98 and the machine gun cartridges this is the conditions that we found them in here is one that is uh, live complete this is the master clip we found five cartridges like this these would have been in that clip and here's a soldier firing the k98 mauser rifle in a combat situation so from this really don't know what it is we can see the date on the back kind of spooling it onto the master clip and then onto the the action where it actually was used so again, a small little detail, but how cool is it to put it together and put it into context? Can you see it? How cool is that? A lead seal. So there is the lead seals, just small pieces, but they are kind of stamped. I can't figure out what it says. There's some kind of a triangle, a S and something. Uh, this is basically what they used. They used this tool very often there were some stamps in the tool you have these lead pieces and you threaded the uh, cable through the lead piece threaded it through the lock system or the hinges and you kind of clamped it together you made the uh, imprint of whatever you wanted on this and in that way the crates and boxes would be intact so they know that the uh, shipment wasn't disturbed and they could be sure that the inventory was correct uh, both from when they sent it and when they received it so your typical lead seals they actually have been using them for hundreds of years so simple thing but with the right imprint and uh, the stamp there they knew for sure that it wasn't broken and uh, that's a kind of a safety thing regarding transporting especially ammunition nice little find i enjoy these little details go into the research part of it and in the end present it to you so just a little detail from the munition storage up in the hillside there i saw that deer again sneaking around here trying to figure out what the history hunter is doing here we got something here what is that is that another detonator oh wow i think it is wow beautiful these are gonna wait there's that's bakelite i think i know what that is so there's the found item well doesn't make too much sense does it well we find out that it's this item here or you could call it a electrical igniter fuse it was actually used for demolition purposes mostly there would be like two cables coming in from the side here and you can screw it into whatever you want it had some threads on this side and here you can see it being put into a piece of explosives and you can use that when the germans wanted to you know take down bridges or whatever so it's in backlight there were two cables coming in here and it could be uh, kind of fired off by a um, electrical charge and you would actually have something like this thing here uh, on the end here and that's the typical german zunda or, or igniter 
and that will actually be coming out from here so you can uh, ignite it by uh, charging the electrical current into here it will go through it will start the um, fuse igniter and the explosion will go off so pretty nice to see that little thing there is very rare to find a um, Glusund uh, 28 electrical igniter fuse and again just a beautiful little detail but uh, put it in context you can see the purpose and why it was up there in the munitions storage area wow 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 i just love that look at all these small details here and these details are from the german activity at this munition storage area the german here had a lot of things here we found some of them and we will definitely find more later very excited so happy that i was able to share these small details with you i know it's just small details put it in context, create the story, and you have enjoyed yourself for this little moment in time with me here. Uh, if you appreciate what I do, you can consider supporting me by either becoming a patron or PayPal supporter. If you donate, you can take part in my um, World War II diorama giveaways that I have each month for all of you doing that. And if you become a patron, you can participate in the draws of my World War II dioramas each and every month, actually. And you can have perks like watching for your eyes only videos, theme videos, feedbacks, research feed all kinds of special stuff for my patrons. So check out those two here. They're also in the in the description of the video other than that subscribe comment share look at the videos as many times as you want check out the ads that helps out a lot uh, i'll be back with more from this place later and uh, until then stay safe keep smiling and i will definitely see you later